Hello, my name is Dr. Corey Hanna, coming to you as a postdoctoral research associate from the School of Geography, Development, and Environment at the University of Arizona. On behalf of my co-authors, I am pleased to share our research about the decentralization of water governance in Africa. As a quick definition, decentralization implies devolving authority from central governments to local governments or from government actors to resource user groups. Incorporating community-based water governance into water policy supports the idea that public participation in decision-making can facilitate efficiency and equity in water access, economic development, and sustainable resource use. Our motivation to pursue this research was based on a tendency that we saw in the literature to review only examples of decentralization, often through qualitative case studies. As such, we found that there was a limited understanding of examples for when decentralization is not pursued. Some recent research initiatives offer information on key aspects about the decentralization of water governance that spans the continent of Africa. But individually, these research efforts do not synthesize across legal, social, and agroecological dimensions. Thus, we wanted to provide a comprehensive assessment of national water governance decentralization trends across all 54 UN recognized African countries. Globally, there has been an increased trend in water decentralization starting in the late 1970s, which was a response to the unsustainability of large water infrastructure development pursued in the 1950s and 1960s, which often relied heavily on the authority of a centralized state. The decentralization of water governance instead promoted the authority and decision-making of local groups to use and allocate water resources according to their local understanding of water resources and community dynamics. Especially, there has been a strong trend to develop water user associations, or WUAs. WUAs are groups of water users that collectively manage water resources. The structures and functions of WUAs established today, such as community water projects in Kenya, are modeled after long enduring irrigation systems, such as the Kanats in Persia. This is based off of empirical evidence that local governance structures can ensure efficient and equitable use of water resources without compromising ecosystems. We conducted a review of water legislation using the water country profiles from the legal office of the Food and Agricultural Organization. For all 54 countries defined by the UN, we reviewed 2,636 legal documents. Of these documents, we found that 316 legal documents contain decentralization language. From there, we developed a database based on legal, social, and agroecological information that relates to the decentralization of water governance. We noted the following, such as whether the country had a water rights provision in their constitution, yes or no, and whether the country had an official water user association law, yes or no. We also collected additional information from secondary data sources for each country in Africa. Based on whether a country has a water rights provision in their constitution and a WUA law, we developed a decentralization typology to characterize the geographic trends in water governance decentralization across the continent of Africa. Interestingly, the decentralization typology also reflected a country's dominant water policy origin, which could be derived from French civil law, English common law, Islamic customary law, or a combination of other laws. We can also see that countries with both a WUA law and a constitutional water rights provision tend to be located in regions of Africa with more irrigation and cropland area. Finally, countries that are more arid also tended to adopt a WUA law and a constitutional rights provision. Using the 316 legal documents from our legislation review, we also found patterns in the pursuit of decentralizing water governance for African countries across time. Much like the rest of the world, countries in Africa began to institute decentralized water governance frameworks following the 1992 Dublin Water Conference, where the principles of integrated water resource management were promoted. We can also see in this figure a classic policy diffusion trend, which starts slowly in the beginning with few countries adopting decentralized water governance frameworks. 
As time goes on, more and more countries are also pursuing decentralization agendas. We can also see this diffusion trend with the Water User Association law adoption. However, as the peak of adoption occurs around 2012, it may be plausible that the trend in water governance decentralization in Africa is slowing down. To examine these trends of water decentralization adoption further, we conducted a time to event analysis, which allows us to see what types of countries are more or less likely to adopt a given policy at a given point in time. For pursuing any legal type of water decentralization, we found that from 1950 to 1918, countries with French civil law origins pursued water decentralization agendas a few years later than countries with other water policy origins. Moreover, from a Cox proportional hazards regression model, we found that in addition to whether a country had French civil law policy origins, overseas development assistance arable land per capita, and aridity significantly influence the likelihood of adopting a water decentralization agenda. We also found a similar trend for specifically adopting a wool law, where French civil law countries were less likely to adopt a wool law and adopted wool laws later than countries with other water policy origins. Even until 2018, 20 countries with French civil law origins had not yet adopted a WUA law. Characteristics that were most significantly related to WUA law adoption also included arable land, total renewable water resources, and aridity. However, democracy had an unexpectedly negative relationship with WUA law adoption. We can learn a lot from taking a bird's eye view of water governance decentralization trends across the continent of Africa. First, it seems that legal forms of decentralization are slowing down. This raises important policy questions around whether people in Africa can legally and truly access and use water. Are these laws actually working? If so, where? What about the informal customary laws that are often more adhered to in many regions of Africa. We've also demonstrated that French civil law countries have not adopted decentralization water agendas. This has important impl implications for how we think about what types of new water institutions can truly be pursued based off of initial governance institutions that are already in place and embedded within a country. Finally, we need to recognize that agroecological contexts can also inform where the implementation of water policies make the most sense, which from our analysis seems to play a more substantial role in the decentralization of water governance than democracy and overseas development assistance. Thank you so much for your time, and if you would like to discuss these points further, please contact me via email.